Good evening and welcome back to the Nexus Gaming Series. I'm your caster, Bahamut. On the left-hand side, we've got the members of Roll1 Esports, and on the right is going to be Regen Blue. This is a best-of-three series for the Nexus Gaming Series and is going to be a Division B West matchup. Thank you all so much for joining me for the second game of the evening. We got a lot of good action coming in. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for cheering in chat, for lurking, following, subbing, donating, hosting, all of that. I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. We got a game, so we'll focus in on this right now as we do have our map bans that did take place. The home team of Roll1 Esports won the coin flip. They opted for map pick priority. Dragonshire and Braxis Holdout were banned out by Regen Blue. Alterac Pass and Sky Temple were banned out by the members of Roll1 Esports. And Battlefield of Eternity will be our game number one, chosen by the members of Roll1 Esports. Let's get back into our draft here. As we have uh, Joam, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate that, my friend. Samuro and ETC going to be banned out here on the left-hand side. Oh, yeah. Give me uh, that rare parrot in chat. Ooh, girl. Sylvanas will be picked up on the right-hand side. Really good push power coming in from her, as we saw in the last game. A lot of mobility as well. Vala, not a hero we've often seen, but hey, she had a little bit of changes come in. She also got some adjustments to her level 13, I believe. Uh, maybe it's 16. I think it's 13, though. So she's going to be able to uh, just auto-attack her way through that game. But often we do see Grimmy being prioritized, as he's... Um, I'm sorry, I looked down and I just, one of the lines is just, you guys are so 2000 late, and I'm like, I don't wanna ho I don't wanna cast these teams anymore. <laughs> Ana and uh, Nubrak will be picked up on the right hand side. Sylvanas, Ana, and Anubrak, I really like that combo right there. Just, just, they're setting themselves up for a lot of great plays. When we come into the ban phase here, they need to probably prioritize something in the solo lane or in the um, immortal race department. They could ban out something like a Greymane. Overall, he's extremely strong on a map like this. We could see a Lunara, and, and Greymane makes sense. Like, so, and that was the reason why I was so confused about, not confused, but just perplexed, if you'd say that, or maybe questioning it overall, from the Jaina is is just, it's going to be, well, you know, you have Greymane, you have so many, 16 talents here. Thank you so much, Ghost Bear. Also, how you doing? Thanks for coming by, my friend. Banning Samura in 2019? I mean, you're Gilly Shark. Like, being Stark in 2019 and not being able to play Samuro, I feel like, is, is what always happens. Um, Sulvaki? Oh, that's pro I probably murdered that one. I'm sorry about it, but thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. You know it's your fault. Yes, yes. It's actually Stark's... They, they, banned, out, they banned out the Samuro because Stark's in chat. Um, but overall, what my point was is that Vala, in comparison to Greymane, she scales... She has a lot of great scaling in the later half of the game, but I feel like Greyman is so much more powerful. This might be a situation where it's just player just wanting to prioritize the Vala and play further back with that safety. Li Ming and Joanna will be picked up on this left-hand side. We also did have a uh, Garrosh being banned out on the right as well. They just don't want to deal with that AoE lockdown as well as the... Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the word for it, the reposition factor that he brings into the fight and just being able to kind of toss people around and get them in bad positions. But a Zeratul is going to be making its way into this game right here. And a Chen. A lot of Chen priority tonight. I'm going to get real close to the mic for this one. Um, Regen, pick Wandering Keg, please. Somebody pick Wandering Keg. <laughs> I'm too close to to uh, too close to playing the game, so broke up. <laughs> Whoa, no, how's it going, bud? Murda, how you doing, friend? Uh, thinking I play for Regen Blue in 2019. That's true. Leoric will round out the draft here on the left-hand side for re or excuse me for the members of Roll One Esports, and that's going to be a Leoric into the Chen. It looks like, and they're just kind of holding off on that that solo lane for a while just to find out, and it works out. It's a, it's a really good draft strategy right there. But overall, between these two teams, I like the burst. I like the potential coming out from both. I'm a little afraid of that Nano boosted Zera to a potential. That's a lot of damage that can come, be coming in here, but the reset city value from Li Ming. There's, a lot, there's three good targets for that one. We'll see if she's going to be able to do that right there. I believe Bandit actually left our, his co-casting spot. He might have gone to get water. It's like, I, I left this room to go get water myself before this matchup, and I walked out of this room, and I was like, man, my house is so cool, and then I came back in here, and I was like, oh my god, it's like 10 degrees warmer. It is nice and toasty in here, but thank you all for joining me. I'll always play keg for you, Baja. Thank you, Stark. What a good match. Wait, what year is this draft from? <laughs> Sam being banned against Fox. Ah, okay. That's good to know. So it looks like we do have one uh, one person who plays it. But either way, let's go ahead and get into this. We got ourselves a game number one. On the left-hand side, we got the members of Roll1 Esports. We are going to be having... Um, Temper du during? 
I'm probably saying that wrong, but Temper During is what I'm going to be going with on the Vala. Um, Junaba is going to be on the Taronda. Rock Your World is going to be on the Joanna. We're going to be having Zad going to be on the Li Ming. And top lane, we're going to be having Big Beard on the Leoric. On the right-hand side, we got the members of Regen Blue. We're going to be having Grundle. Grendel? Grendel? Grendel. Going to be on the uh, Chen. We are going to be having Fox on that, uh, not Samura. We're going to be having them on the Zeratul. Mongus will be on the Anubrak. Larson's going to be on the Sylvanas. And Jay is going to be on that Ana. Strike mode activated. And let's look at our level one talents as well here. We actually just want to quickly pull that away and just get vision here set up for both these teams. And we can check those out a little bit later. I'm also skimming through the level one talents. Aether Walker or the uh, Li Ming right there. Gonna be getting the magic missile damage increase right there, if I'm not mistaken. Ooh, Jay's not gonna get that combo thrown out right to them, and Rock Your World gonna be stepping forward into this lane. I'm also just skimming through some of the other towns just to get an idea here, and it's gonna be Consume Vitality for the Leork, and I feel like we see almost just so many different versions of that consistently through a lot of these games. PC makes the room hot. Also, my light makes the room hot. And my giant um, soundboard makes the room hot, and I'm sitting here sweating. I've made the smart decision of no longer making hot tea before casting, and now I, now I make iced tea. But even then, that's just um, that's just like a room temperature liquid at this point. <laughs> Not Grendel. Is it is it Grendel? Big Beard is going to be forced out of this top area as we do have the bottom lane being fought over right now. Lunar Flare going to be coming out and just kind of forcing them back a little bit there. Let's actually jump onto the vision right now for the members of Regen Blue. Excuse me, for Roll 1 Esports. I'm going to do that all night because they both start with R. My brain's just going to go to the same place every single time. Kick going to be going out from that Chen. They're going to be able to just to back out of this top lane. No big deal. And they'll have Impaler Camp pushing in here as well. Toronto with the Sentinel in the bottom lane will scout out a few. And look at this damage going on to Mongoose right now. They do have the Burrow Charge back over the gate, but that was just a little risky right there. Just it, it, just that play overall. We do have our two-minute mark hitting soon, so we might see these teams rotate off and go ahead and grab the Bruiser Camps. Typically, you want to prioritize those right around that two-minute 45 mark in the game. That way you can get it out right at the three-minute, rotate over to your Immortal, and then go for the pressure. and uh, go, or Not pressure so much as race. The other thing to note, too, is I, I noted in the last best uh, Battlefield of Eternity game that we just had, but I'll say it again here if anyone's new to the stream or if they just they haven't caught this. We do see vision for the members of the blue team, so we are seeing the axes that are signifying this is going to be where the uh, members of Roll1 Esports will want to attack, and this is going to be where the members of Regen Blue want to attack, because it will show the priority for the blue team. For example, if I jump over the red team and show their vision, it swaps on our mini-map. So just a little thing right there, and we can also jump over the vision right now and just get an idea of what they're seeing. They saw the Joanna in bottom lane, they know there's a camp pushing in as well. Top lane has a lot of good back and forth right now. Grendel getting their, um, their hope drained, maybe their brew drained, but mostly their health gonna be drained right there. My boys regen blue. What's up, Porky? How you doing, bud? I think it's Grendel, like from Beowulf. How you doing, Hemo? Race gonna be starting out here in favor for the members of Rock Your or excuse me, for Roll One Esports. Just reading, just reading what's in, in front of me immediately instead of just actually seeing the team name. But this is also gonna be Sylvanas dealing with the bottom lane pressure that also is. Mongo's forcing them back, anchoring pretty well. Grendel doing the exact same thing. We do have Fox stepping forward onto this Joanna, but mostly just putting on some pressure and, and kind of whittling them down, finding Zad a little bit. Gonna get one nice uh, cleave onto them as they had the Burrow Charge thrown and they blinked around just to kind of get away from some of that incoming damage, but they still took a little bit right there. And this is the defense overall in favor for the members of Regen Blue. Can roll one eSport. <laughs> Big Beard in top lane is gonna get forced out quite heavily. I apologize for missing that one. And now, oh, Zad might have been caught in their rotation. Burrow Charge connecting under two. Lunar Flare goes out, and I think that might have slowed them down a little bit, but they managed to walk away. This is just, it's just a game of just like tooth, tooth and nail. Just fighting right through it, but that's also going to be the reveal onto the Zera tool right there. Body blocking a little bit from Grendel just to slow them down on this advanced advancement onto this, because they know that there's, there's damage going onto their immortal. They can see that health bar going down, so they know that there's not a full five stack right there. Overall, they're just trying to force them back, but Fox is taking a lot of damage. Burrow Charge once again. Nice Lunar Flare to follow up, and Big Beard it says hello with a mace to the face, and that's Zeratul going down. First blood of the game going over to Roll 1 Esports, and now they're draining the hope of Grendel. Gonna get that Sentinel for that slow as well. Gonna split these off, and this is just purely race form. Fairly close in, in, the, in the health right there. We're gonna see if that uh, kill onto the Zeratul makes a big difference. Also, Rock Your World is now just joining in. Maybe they're just gonna be going for a couple of these shield glares just to kind of slow down the enemy's actual race potential. 43 health right there, and they managed to get it. 4,527. 
shielding for their immortal, it'll jump into the bottom lane. Same kind of note as before if you haven't uh, if you haven't caught it. If the gate or whichever lane is the most well defended or least has the least amount of damage, that is where the immortal will be going. So you can see bottom lane has a sliver put onto it, so this is just going to be the priority for it. Leoric back in top lane into that Chen. I too say hello with a mace. <laughs> Rock your W. <laughs> uh, but if, if pressure's coming in here. I don't think we we're going to expect much more than what we typically get is just going to be the front gate going down. If, if they may have gotten a kill before this, I would expect them to try and go beyond the front gate and go for the fort a little bit further. But realistically, they're just they're going to need to back off because the wave clear is pretty good as well as the uh, the pressure just being pushed, pushed back. But Chen, I apologize. He's going to be going down to the top lane to that Lior. I was not watching. Actually, Chen's going to be going down in top lane to Chen right there. Unfortunately, <laughs> let's actually jump to experience really quickly. So they've had two kills on the side of Roll One Esports, and that's yielded them about a 1,000 uh, experience right there. And so you can see early game kills, they'll slowly give you some experience, but it's not like the later game that are really going to be chunking up. There was a there's a highlight I, I pointed out earlier where a team in the late game they were down by like 4,000 experience. So there was. They gained 4,000 experience from just getting two kills in the later half of a game. So it just it shows how much you can really come back into a game by just getting some of these kills as it does progress. Really nice Lunar Flare. They're going to be stacking up that Lunar Blaze. Rock your world a little bit low. That's going to be Li Ming throwing out a couple combos. Look at Zeratul coming in. And I don't think they know this. I don't think they see this coming in. Actually, no, there's the Danger Pings right there. They're going to get one cleave and they'll just back right out of there. There's no 10 just yet. And this is more or less harassment from Fox. They're not going to have any sort of massive setup for a big blow up. But Chen is going to be back in top lane. Big Beard being pushed out a little bit. And we're having a little bit of an experience uh, uh, deficit starting to form between these two teams. More so in favor for Roll1 Esports over Regen, but they're not out of this just yet. It's Battlefield of Eternity. It's a very brawly map. This can go any way at any point. <laughs> Suicidal Panda. <laughs> Chen over Chen, yeah. Um, giraffe on ice skates, I think it is. Thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate that, my friend. Bruiser can't picked up on the left. Bruiser can't picked up on the right. And they'll just wait a couple seconds. Or this will not even waiting. Just this will be a couple seconds behind the opposing side. Sentinel did go through, so they do know it's going to be there. They just get the shield glare right into Fox's face. And I always think of the shield glare, um, like in the carbide animations, where like Illidan gets shield, like a bunch of people get shield glared by, uh, I think it's Joanna, and then like Illidan's like complaining the most, and he has a blindfold on, like. Come on now, Illidan. How can you be blinded if, if, you, if you're already blinded? Uh, Lyric is going to be able to get that Wraith Walk out. Fox is trying to step up, and they're going to maybe turn around onto them, but they have that wormhole right out of there, and they'll be absolutely fine. Ten talents here right around the corner, and they are going to be splitting this Chen off into bottom and Lyric and top, and both these teams know that there's a player in that lane, so they're going to be maybe trying to step up into the enemy side. Zad is going to be throwing out a couple of those combos as Fox went ahead and dove out. They do have their ten talents here on their side. Wave of Force for the Li Ming. Not going to be going into sort of, any sort of d disintegrate. And I think it's, it's pretty much the standard what you'd expect. Uh, Ten Talenteer is not here on the opposing side just yet, and they know that the Chen's still in bottom. They're going to try and make a play with this. They not, yeah, I was about to say, there's no way. I was like, are they going to entomb Fox? Because I know that Blink should be off cooldown. They should have that up and available. But they got Tens themselves. Pretty much what you'd expect. Do we get a Wandering Keg? Do we get a one? No, it's not. Rip. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be the halfway point triggered in favor. Ooh, VP under one. There's a web wrap onto the Joan as well. Wailing Arrow went out at some point right there. That's going to be the big blow up onto the Toronto. That's going to be the Entomb as well. Li Ming and Toronto both go down. Big Beard so very low right here. And they're going to try and make their way out. I don't think they have a Wraith Walk up and available. And they too will be going down. Really good triple play coming out for the members of Regen Blue. And now Roll1 Esports has to go back, set up their lanes, and kind of go for the defense here. Because I would expect this to be an easy burn in their favor. Rock Your World was stepping forward right there, just just trying to maybe get some damage, or I think it was maybe just going for the blinds to slow them down a little bit. The Orc will be respawning right on this Immortal. Vala is going to be back as well, and they're going to try and race this. They've got a little bit of a lead here. Vala does have a few stacks on the uh, Hungering Arrow, and they're going to get these Vault combos right there, and now the race is on, and they're just purely going for race. Chen's still harassing a little bit. They're going to drink some brew and jump back into this. Can they stop them from getting this Immortal? If they can, if they all die and then come back, no. I think with that knockback right there, that might have secured it for them. A thousand deficit between the and then Grendel ends up going down. They, end up, they get the... We stand I read that backwards. They didn't even get the Immortal. So they, they lose the Immortal. They lose their Chen. And now roll one esports. Oh my god. I think if Regen just pulled their Chen and just had the Chen for the race too, that would have just been that last little bit they needed. The Confused as the Eye of Horus pick. 
I am a little bit too. Maybe it's just maybe it's just to play a little bit safer. Maybe just to just to stay further back. I'm not sure. I really don't know. I'm not an Ana player, so I, I don't know really what kind of determines the reasoning to go between the two. I mean, Zeratul is a great target for for the Nana boost. I would expect even Sylvanas maybe it would be a great target. I would expect the out of them as well. But just Zeratul, I mean, just being able to get a lot of blow. Maybe it was a misclick. Who knows? But that's a lot of damage going onto Zad. Look at this Eye of Horus coming through VP onto a couple. You can see Jay is holding, but they might get stunned right there, and I think that would pull them out, but they still get the pick onto the Li Ming. They're going to be looking for Tempered. Oh, do they get it? Actually, they do. Mongoose going to step forward right there. Rock your world a little bit low. But look at this web wrap. The ping's coming out. And that's... Oh, that's a pick right there. Oh. A lot of picks in their favor on the side of regen really going to turn around that experience in their favor. That's that's such a smart... And this is what I wanted to highlight right there. So it's three, it's three to six in kills, and those earlier kills came through in favor for Roll 1 Esports. But regen, clean and house in this late game, really going to start picking up the experience and going to make some momentum in their favor. Speaking of momentum, Grendel in this bottom lane still just want to know, didn't take keg. That's all I just wanted to say. It's the only reason I jumped down here. Sylv and Zera are great nano targets, though. I agree. I feel like you pick I when you don't have a good nano target, but I don't know. Nano infusion with Q Zera is like a free win, though. I agree, Stark. The the nano infusion at level twenty is a it's because you you heal from your ability damage done, and you're also getting a cooldown reduction. And then Zera tool also gets cooldown reductions from some of the other abilities that is he, that he's using as the game progresses here. But oh my God, Big Beard having so much damage put onto them, they're able to make it out of there, but almost getting shredded. That was just one more second, one more cleave, definitely, or maybe even just one more auto from Fox that would have done it. Well, here's the thing. We'll, we'll definitely have an interview after this one, and if and if Regen Blue wins this game, please remind me. I'll ask that in the interview. I'll definitely ask the team why. Why no? I, I you know what? I might even just ask it in Div B chat afterwards, even if we don't get an inter interview with them. But hey, it's the best three series. It's anybody's game, and we're in game number one. Immortals will be spawning here. We are going to be seeing our third one of the game. If I if I'm Remembering that correctly. Shaman Camp and top lane will be picked up. John I, or excuse me, Leork was uh, slowing down that top lane a little bit, or that mid lane rotation a little bit. And look at this push up. They're going to be able to confirm the fort. So that's going to be at least even on the map side, or at least that's a double fort pickup in favor for Roll and Esports. But still, top lane and bottom lane are a little opened up. If, if Regen Blue can pick up this Immortal 12 minutes into the game, it'll probably be around 14 minutes of the game realistically. This thing will scale and it will have a lot of good value with it. Let's check it. Take a peek at level 13 talent tiers, and we'll cycle through some other numbers in just a second here. But this is going to be top lane being cleared by the entire team of Roll and Esports to try and get that speed through it. And then look at this race going to be coming out. They can definitely have vision for the enemy team going for that top lane clear. And so they're going to be able to almost get this to halfway, and they're going to back off. Maybe look for a setup here, Zeratul with the blink, able to make it out. Absolutely, it's 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 you can definitely have a misclick here. Let's actually pull away the talents really quickly. Let's see, let's get some full vision of this entire battlefield right now, because so far they're going to be playing this part a little bit slower. This is a little bit more risky, but at the same time to consider, Regen Blue is on a little bit of a time bomb here, as they need to consider that there's going to be a third wave coming in or a third um, a catapult coming in every third wave. There we go. That's going to be a lot of good damage going out overall. That wailing arrow almost securing the kill onto Zad, but that's Vala going down initially. This Li Ming is just trying to get a reset, but Larson and Fox are able to make it out alive with just very low health. And that Leork stepped very far forward. A cleave goes onto them. Big Beard ends up going down, and that's going to be the Sylvanas traded out for it. VP onto one at least. Or excuse me, it's two, because Zad was in there as well. And that's going to be the Li Ming going down. Can Rock Your World make it out alive? Seems like that's going to be the Immortal helping them out, but Chen goes ahead and kicks in. And Mongoose needs to make sure that they don't get uh, stunned out or picked off by the Immortal. Nexus forces can be very strong, but looks like Regen Blue are going to be able to pick up their first Immortal here. It does look like Mongoose has to hearth. Halfway phase is going to be there, and they just have to go for the race. The other thing to note, though, Vala is back, and she's got great race herself. Taronda will help out with that. Sentinel coming through. I think they've got a little bit of vision on these teams, and I think, yeah, they, they've just got to give this over to regen right here. But that's a rather negative thing to say. That someone misclicked? I mean, it happens. I've hit control one instead of control two. I've fat fingered before. Larson will go ahead and clear out that top lane, making sure that that pressure isn't going to mount to too much. They also do have the immortal coming up here. Same note as before. Top lane's a little more defended. It's got two of these turrets instead of one. They also push back all this lane pressure, so now they'll have the waves coming in with them. 
We'll actually cycle through some of the other numbers and we'll jump onto 16 talent tiers when both teams have it so we can get an idea of what those look like. Leoric in the bottom lane, pushing that up a little bit more for the friendly team, trying to get some value down there. But this is a full force through top lane as they've got five plus the Immortal coming in here. Leoric might want to jump up. No, they're going for Siege in bottom lane. Leoric just wants to get push pressure, but I don't know if that's a, I don't know if that's really what you want right there. Because you just lost a fort and the Immortal still has a great shield on it. Mm, I don't know how I feel about this 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 trade right now. We'll see. 16 talent tiers right around the corner for the members of Roll One Esports. Maybe that's what they're going with that that siege. But either way, that's gonna be Chen Harthing back at this time. Blessed shield onto a couple. They're gonna start further step forward. That's gonna be VP onto uh, two in the back line. Shield glare went out as well. Wailing arrow is gonna be there from the Sylvanas. This is going to be a nice eye of horrors coming through, but they end up getting the, they end up getting Fox regardless. Larson getting some good healing, and now Jason and friends need to disengage. I don't know if they have a sleep dart to puncture through all this, and that's going to be kill after kill so far. Jason gonna be the ping target, and that's going to be Mongoose, the only one left. They sight. Oh, that's a very very good entombment. I think they already used the burrow charge. They go down. Top lane still has the immortal coming through, and that's going to be top lane getting burned by the immortal. But like. This won't end. I don't know how I feel about this play. I think the implication is that it's such a bad pick, it could only have been picked by accident. That's why it's negative. That's fair to say. Like, and I don't, I don't, like, I definitely don't mean it in a negative sense. It's just, it is, it is, it's when I'm watching it and I see these things, like, I, I, I'm making these additions in my head, like Zeratul and Sylvanas, Nana boosted. Like, in my mind, I'm just like, yeah, that's what you go for. But hey, these teams have different plans. They have different synergies. Maybe they're going for the fish in the barrel at 20, you know? They just go for the, um, oh god, what's the, what's the Eye of Horus upgrade at level 20? Is it, no, it's, I feel like it's tactical something, but that feels wrong. Um, but maybe you go for the buried alive and you also have that upgrade and so you're just kind of fishing a barrel just shooting them into there So you're getting the cooldown reduction onto it or no, no, it's increased damage. I can't remember what the name is. She's doing amazing. Yes Jason's doing a great job on Ana. So it's just it might be one of those things. They're just like I want more healing value in the fights um, They might just figure they had enough damage especially with Tyrande for healing that's fair too. They just want the healing. They just want a ha higher healing output. Speaking of, let's actually jump over to that really quickly. Ana does have 57, or we'll round up, 58,000 in healing. Compared to the other side, they're almost they're almost doubling it in a sense, depending on how you round and up and down. But it's close enough to say they're, they're just about doubling the opposing side when it comes to healing. And so it's just really strong so far from that Ana. And hey, they're getting the value that they're looking for. But it's 18 to 19 to 18 when it comes to levels. They're all going to be hearthing back in, in bottom lane right now as they were trying to go for the bot bottom lane for burn to try and even out some of that catapult pressure. And they've managed to hearth them or force the hearth back from the enemy team. They get a top lane opened up a little bit. This will still be where the enemy immortal goes if they do end up picking it up. But the race side is on the uh, safe side for both teams as this is going to be the... Uh, no, no, this is going to be the defensive side for both teams. I was reading it backwards on the map. I've seen some legendary red team in tombs uh, from a blue Leoric before. Oh my god. And with the spell shield from Tyrande, heals kind of makes uh, Nana less impactful. Okay. I definitely want to ask them. I, e either team, realistically. Sleep Dark goes out to one. Chen pushing up top lane a little bit further. Bottom lane is stacked up a bit as well. Leoric with one leeched for a couple seconds there not going to be able to find anything further and they're just kind of playing this slow right now i think both teams are kind of soaking up for that 20 more so on the side of roll one esports but they're closing in on the experience department 8 to 10 in kills 19 to 19 we got keeps down on both sides top lane and bottom lane for the opposing sides and are they stepping forward for the race Savannah's with some good damage right there and just going to be starting this this burn fox is standing still so they won't be actually able to see that on the opposing side Hungering Arrow was finished out there as well, so they're just going to have that uh, extra damage coming in. If I'm not mistaken, it's just extra damage. And once one more uh, additional bounce as well. Okay. Damage and a bounce. But they burn it down a little bit. They'll back off. They, the enemy team is going to be stepping forward. And let's actually pull away the uh, talents right here. Actually, no. Let's actually pull up the talents because I'm curious what they actually took at level 20. 
Oh, hold on. That's the Buried Alive coming in for the Elite Orc. That's going to be actually Chen getting pushed out right there. Can they make it out alive? Do they have the time for it? The Earth, Wind, and Fire, they actually managed to get it. Now they're going to rejoin the friendly team. That's going to be this Vala trying to get some extra damage out as well. Jason trying to throw out some healing here and there, but that's going to be Chen able to make it out alive. Once this ends, they're going to be very low on health. I don't know. Does that poison sit? No, it doesn't. Okay. They're going to be fine. They hearth out and they're going to be able to back out. And they know that they're not going to have a Chen here, so they push up onto it and they take the race for now on the side of Roll One Esports. It's on the race side for both teams. Are they going for defense on the side of Regen Blue? Doesn't look like it. I think they're just going to be going straight up for just to, trying to take down some of the uh, immortal shielding that they're going to have to deal with. Oh, this is a strong immortal. It's going through top lane, as noted before. Still, They still have a keep up there. Bottom lane has a catapult to mounting slowly. 20 talent tiers here for both sides. She didn't... Oh, she went to Armored Stance at level 20. Okay. We have the uh, elemental conduit for that Chen. Sylvanas holding. What are they going for at this 20? Checking bush right there. I really like that. Look at this. Look at this flank. Look at this flank from regen right now. They don't know where they are. They Mongoose gets scouted out, and they I think they saw them go in there. They catch one. That's going to be the dive going in. VP onto two. That's going to be Leork with a Blessed Shield coming out as well. The, there's going to be the Buried Alive around this, but that's going to be the Wailing Air on top of it. That's a great follow-up, and that's also going to be the Eye of Horse coming out. That's going to be Toronto, the first one to go down. No more Eye of Horse. Looks like it was being able to be used right there, and that's going to be the Iron Skin being procced by Rock Your World. But here's the thing. The Immortal just finished that top lane keep, and they need to back out right there. Two for none trade. But here's the thing, yeah, they, they can't just let this go to core because it will definitely take down the core if left on its own. And so they just hearth back, they go for the defense. They'll lose a little bit of uh, core health, I think, here. The, I, a percent are... Actually, yeah, I don't think they'll lose anything. This is a really quick burn coming out from region. Actually, yeah, they'll lose, they'll lose a little bit. They've also got some catapults and mounting in bottom lane. So that's constant pressure through top and bottom coming out in favor for the members of Roll1 Esports as region blue are left with just a core at 75%. But there's, there's, there's like, you could backdoor on either side. And I think that's the scary part. They just have this top lane camp that they'll grab on their side of, the, of uh, regen blue. Such a good back and forth game for our game number one of this best of three series between these two teams. Roll One Esports came out really strong in, in the initial of this game, and then as Breach and Blue is kind of scaled, as well as they've just kind of maybe understood the enemy's playstyle, really started just kind of answer to a lot of these fights and started bringing it themselves. Also, the 10 talent tier pickup was such a big value for them. Sentinel does come through. They might have scattered a couple members as they're going to bottom lane, but regardless, they will see that the enemy team is clearing out this bottom lane, and they could go for the invade onto this camp if they wanted to. It seems sad. Maybe just throwing out... Or just getting set up for this. Okay. Let's actually get their vision right now. Look at this wraparound. Oh, they're just, they're playing this so insanely safe on both sides. They don't want to... This is actually, no, I wouldn't even say this is insanely safe right here as they're trying to step up and steal away this bruiser camp. Zad is going to be throwing in a little damage here and there. I don't think that they're going to try and steal this away. That might be wrong. Ro <laughs> Rock Your World is just stepping onto this point right now and just kind of feigning that they want to. They're also delaying this out, which means that bottom lane is going to be stacking up and that camp is going to get some value. You can see the retreat pings are coming out and I think they know that they like, well, they're delaying this out. They know that we don't have our Sylvanas that's clearing bottom. Can they actually get back onto this? Mongoose has the burrow charge forward. That will be the iron skin used right in time. Toronto with the starfall. That's also going to be the buried alive. And so there's just nothing coming through for that. Anubrak is just outside of the healing from the Ana, but that's going to be Rock Your World still living through all this. Meanwhile, Zaz just dumping out damage and living within all this and just gonna be so very happy. And the Zeratul doesn't get the cleave right there. VP onto two. Wandering, or not Wandering Keg, but the Storm, Earth, and Fire was used right there. Uh, Rock Your World is so very low and they actually have the Retreat Pings coming out. I cannot believe that Rock Your World made it out of that alive. I, I just cannot believe it. And now Fox in a bit of a rough spot, they go down. Top lane pressure coming in. That's going to be Lurk uh, with the massive, very quick... Uh, clear onto this. They did actually go for Mithril Maze, so I do believe they have in increased attack speed. Yes. It's kind of funny to watch that animation. Blue has the advantage of the backdoor race if they wanted. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. 
and it seems like they want to push up bottom lane. They want to try and end this before the enemy team does get back up and alive and goes for another defense. Can Chen get out of this alive? I don't see it happen, and they end up going down. That's a reset for Lee Ming. Buried alive comes out as well. That's going to be Blessed Shield. Larson so very low, they get picked off. Mongoose is going to be back and going for the defense here. That will be Leork able to make their way out, and they are able to save Jason, but... Unfortunately, the rest of the team does step up, and I, they, they've completely ignored the Immortal, and they're like, cool, let's just end. Starfall coming out here, and now they're trying to burn down this this uh, core, and it seems like that's going to be the case. The members of Roll 1 Esports are going to take game number one in our best three series. GG. Well played. Fifty percent more mopping. Huh. <laughs> Those swords aren't gonna mop themselves. Oh boy. Nope, wrong one. Alrighty. I'm just gonna ask the teams what they wanna do and then uh, we'll get into our next game here in just a second. Thank you all so much for joining me this evening. I really do appreciate all the support as we are trying to push into our, our partner potential. We're getting there, and I really do appreciate everyone who's supporting, who's hosted over, who's just in, enjoying the stream, who's come just for the games, and the people who have, might have found themselves a, a new person to watch Monday through Thursday after work when I do a lot of casting. Hi. My name's Bahamut. I do a lot of casting for Heroes of the Storm. I've actually been featured on the Tespa Collegiate series over on the Bliss Heroes channel with Jhow for a while. I also got to do that with Cat Peach for the final day for our All-Star event. I've been so gracious, so gracious, so lucky to cast things like the Heroes Hype Premiere series. Um, I got to cast Open Division um, in the past as well. So um, I really do enjoy casting Heroes of the Storm. I like to bring you guys a lot of good games and, and bring you a great production. So I, it's something that we don't have and that's my goal. That's really all I want. And the big thing to note on the whole thing about wanting to be a partner is I'll have the availability to have video transcoding. And I think that's really, really impactful because I stream at 1080p, 60 FPS, 6K. And not everyone's internet can handle that. I have a best friend who's no joke contacted me. He's like, dude, I can't watch your stream. It's so, so laggy. What's wrong with it? And I thought I was having a bunch of issues. And then I started talking to some people and they're like, sometimes like your output's so high that we literally can't watch it without you having transcoding. And that only happens sometimes for me. It's not always. So I really appreciate everyone who's just watching, who's encouraging the, you know, encouraging channel growth and all that. So I just thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you are new to the channel, you've never followed, you've never been here before. I do a lot of casting for Heroes of the Storm, Monday through Thursday, typically, whether it's for Nexus Gaming Series, uh, uh, Heroes Lounge, Heroes Hype, Bush League. If they bring back another season, I will cast the crap out of that. Because it's also the one league that I can swear and get drunk while doing. And there's a really good highlight video that I think Fringe made. No, I don't know if it was, maybe it was Tower Baron. But it's just like Cat Peach and I just, just messing up team names and, and having a good time. So, yeah. Also, lesser known, the Lord of All Metallic Dragons. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> Yeah, just like, whatever. But we're getting ourselves set up here for game number two. I just really wanted to, th I just wanted to thank you all for lurking, supporting, following, anything. Just thank you all for being here. It, it means the absolute world to me that I can provide you all with great games. And thank you. I, I love you all. Keldorn, how you doing, bud? Oh. Oh, and then side note also, partner also means more emotes, which means bandit emotes, because that's pretty much all I want at this point. <laughs> Yo, Fro, Thanks thank you so streaming. much. Thank you for the 200 bits, my friend. Seriously, thank you for the support. I really do appreciate that. Can we just do drunk community cast? Like, can that be a thing? Yo, Cat Peach, what we should do is we should get together, and then on, like, Sundays, we should grab a bunch of VODs and then just do that. Also, an epic dragon summon from Final Fantasy. Yeah. That's actually where it comes from. It comes from the Final Fantasy summons of Bahamut from Final Fantasy VII. Because when I when I was growing up, I watched my older brother play it. And, like, I no joke sat and watched him play that entire game. He is cool because he gets three summons in Final Fantasy VII. Exactly. Exactly. Ah, oh, profanity! I'm a profanity! I'm good, my dude. How's Bandit doing today? Bandit's wonderful. He's a sleepy pup. He's definitely tired. Um, Froge, thank you so much. Thank Fro. Thank you so much for the for the... Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you for using that here, my friend. I really appreciate that. Um, 
subscribe. Okay. Uh, team one is ready. Team two is gonna need a minute. All right, that's fine with me. All right, cool, Capiche. Yeah, we'll talk about that. We'll get something going for that. Cause I would really, I like, I miss just kind of like, just saying whatever instead of trying to like filter myself a little bit. Because there's a lot of games like I watch and I cast, and I'm just like, oh, can I make Fox Captain, please? Yeah, I can. Cough, cough, pizza man. <laughs> <laughs> These are, let's just make sure they're ready and then we'll get going and do our next game. Uh, Elanka? Elanka, I think. Thank you um, for the, thanks for coming by. Team one, rolls ready. Okay, going, good luck, have fun. Spooky worm. Let's go ahead and get into it, everybody. We're going into game number two. We got ourselves a map. Let's get into this. We are going to I thought my buttons pushed better. Either way, welcome into game number two of our best of three series. We are going to Tomb of the Spider Queen. And if you're sitting at home and you're wondering, wait a minute, Bahamut, how did we get to Tomb of the Spider Queen? Don't you worry, I got you. The home team this evening is going to be Roll One Esports. They won the coin flip and opted for map pick priority. Dragonshire and Braxis Holdout were banned out by the members of Regen Blue. Roll One Esports banned out Alterac Pass and Sky Temple. They picked Battlefield of Eternity as the map number one and won it. Game number two, they wanted map pick priority on the side of Regen Blue, and they've decided to take us to Tomb of the Spider Queen. And I gotta say, Tomb of Spider Queen for a game number two, it's a lot bigger of a map. It's slower in the sense that you're not gonna be able to, it, like there's a lot, I, I've seen teams end this map in 10 minutes. Absolutely, but I feel like a lot more often especially with how matched out that first game was between the two teams. I don't expect this to be a short match. I think we're going to be having a long and a, a nice long time on Tomb of the Spider Queen. So definitely make sure you get yourselves a snack, a beverage, something to something to cozy up with. If you have a blanket, if you have a cute little puppy or kitten or something, grab it. Time to get settled in. We got ourselves a best of three series and we're only in game number two. We could go to game three. Regen Blue could bring it back on Tomb of Spider Queen. Definitely going to be taking their times with these bans this time as we have a uh, ban onto the Zeratul from last game. They don't want to deal with that again. Do we get a Samuro ban coming out from the members of Roll One Esports? Because Samuro, I feel like, gets a lot of good <laughs> spooky worm. Thank you for the... I like that. I hope that... I just want that to be a thing now. Like, just Tilda is now spooky worm in my chat. <laughs> Do they ban out the Samuro here is my question. Tomb of Spider Queen, I feel like he gets a ton of value. It's a small map so he can rotate around and it's not gonna be there. Do we get the immediate snap for the Samuro? Actually, we have some more ban phase. I actually thought we were already through our ban phase here and I completely was just like, the other team has first pick priority. Come on now. Uh, Joanna gonna be banned out on the right hand side here. This Yo, Weskra! Bursting decadence and withheld permission. Thank you so much for the 500 bits, my dude! Arms collectively bound. If sweetness can Baha, can you be my cute little kitten? Or... Can, okay. Then I'll still I need a flight to, to UK, please. <laughs> to high-five you yesterday, my friend. Peace. Banning Samuro. Damn. Thanks for the cast tonight, Bahamut. Seriously, Whisker, thank you so much for the for the 500 bits. You did not have to do that. I really do appreciate that. Thank you so much, Catfeach and Lorelai, for the for the spooky worms in chat. Alrighty, we have a Kael'thas being banned out here, so they're getting rid of that wave clear. We have an ETC on the left-hand side. Rock Your World will be able to rock that ETC as an Uberac and Toronto will be the one-two punch on the side of regen. I like that combo right there. That's going to be a lot of good control, a lot of good follow-up, and... Um, Sorry, sorry. I just I'm reading the chat right now. It's just like, lol. Were you hovering Kalethos? I think there was some some discussion happening right there. But they're going for this Vala once again. Seems like they've got a player who just prioritizes it overall, and they really enjoy that Stukov. Also to be picked up here pairs well into the uh, etc. I like that follow up with the lurking arm, just kind of lock down a member. Overall, that's just such a that's such a great one two coming out from them. And now ban wise, let's see what we get here. They do need some extra damage. They need some wave clear. Ghoul Dan could be an option for the. Uh, Oh no, I think Jaina, I, realistically Jaina would be the ban if I'm going, if I'm prioritizing something. No, maybe they want the Jaina themselves because the reason I'm saying Jaina is because Ring of Frost with an ETC is such a great combo. Even Water Elemental, getting that slow, getting that sustained damage is just extra prowess and power that you can bring to the fight, especially during a mosh pit. So um, we can, we can do it manually for now. <laughs> I need a spooky worm command. 
I'll make a note of that, Cat Peach. Spooky worm. Where's Kaleo? Where's Kaleo? The longer the worm, the spookier. <laughs> Alarak gonna be banned on the left-hand side. There's the Janna gonna be picked up for the members of Regen. So, makes sense the reason why they didn't go for the ban right there, because they want it themselves. Ken? Ken. Chen gonna be the priority right there. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can see the draft chat right behind me and Zad saying, no! Because, like, that was the thing is, I was like, why aren't they banning out the Janna? Well, they have priority after that ban phase, so they're gonna be going it for themselves. T is this... No, they need a solo laner, so it's just gonna be double support for the Vala. So it's Vala hyper carry. Do we get a Rexar solo lane? Into the Chen, that might be good. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Kaleo! How you doing, bud? Thanks for coming by. <laughs> that was freaking spooky. <laughs> How you doing, bud? Thanks for coming by. I hope you're having a great day. Alrighty, everybody, we are going to be getting into this in just a second. We've got one more pick coming out from the members of Regen Blue. Chen, Jaina, blah, blah, blah. They need more damage to go with that Jaina. A Grey Mane here wouldn't actually be bad. The the, the dive would work out really good with the team. Something dive -y. Uh Sustained damage works as well. I'm okay with the sustained damage. I personally would like the, the dive potential because it pairs with the Anubarak. It pairs with the Chen. Rainer does bring a little bit of kind of... Uh, Safety to the Jaina because they're gonna be playing in the same kind of uh, positioning or, or realm of the of the fight, and so that penetrating round might be a good way to kind of deny uh, ETC from the power slide forward or Misha Bear with the uh, lunge forward, which I actually don't know what it's called when she actually is it just lunge that she has? I'm not sure. Who plays Rexar in 2019? All right, come on now, Stark. <laughs> Seriously, Bahamut, I joined as you said. Where's Kaylee? And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I uh, we we I was saying that um someone was saying that I, or Cat Peach was saying that I need to make a spooky worm command like exclamation point spooky worm and it will do the tildes but I was like oh okay well I, I started writing in my notebook and I was just like where's Kaleo when you need him because you're the only person I know how to do yeah there you go Cat Peach explained it thank you all so much I'm super pumped about this we're getting into game number two here let's find out if they can take it in two zero the side of roll one esports. Misa Charge, thank you so much, uh, Torge and uh, Corvix. Also, how you doing? Thanks for coming by. All right, on the left-hand side, up one in our best of three series, we've got the members of Roll One Esports. Uh, tempered, we're just gonna go with that, is gonna be on the Vala. We're gonna be having Zad going to be on the Tassadar. Rock Your World is going to be on the on the ETC. Uh, Junaba is gonna be on the Stukov, and we have Big Beard going to be on the Rexar. On the right-hand side, we got the members of Regen Blue trying to take us to game number three on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Mongoose will be on the Anubrak. Fox will be on the Rainer. Jason going to be on that Taronda. Larson going to be on the Jaina. And we have Grendel on the Chen once again. Let's go ahead and check out our mid lane. I'm going to... All right. Thank you so much, Kaleo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> this is not the HTC with your host, Butt Hamet Gaming. <laughs> Your Rexer players have feelings too. Best command though. Seriously, Butt's command is, the, is probably best command. I'm gonna put like, I need to put the uh, Spooky Worm on like a zero second cooldown so that way people can just spam it. Cause I'm okay with that one. But Mongoose just able to make it out of there with a couple hundred health. Really, really low right there, but they're gonna be fine. They're gonna back right out of there and we're just gonna set ourselves up with some vision right now. We're gonna get into rotations here. Flare for the... Flare for the Rexar. Just gonna have that extra, like, a lot of vision, too, from the members of Roll One Esports, because they also have the Oracle, I believe it is, from that, uh, from Zad on that Tassadar. So they're just gonna have a lot of good vision potential coming out from both these teams. Also, Lurking Arm can be used as vision potential. Let's actually jump into the bottom lane, as Big Beard is gonna go ahead and take a bit of a, um, staff to the back? I don't know what you'd call that. I think there's actually, like, a term for it. Because it's, I don't know, it's like a giant mace in a sense either way that will be first build of the game going over in favor for the members of regen blue yo josh how you doing stark only respect misha <laughs> misha does play rexar that is true rexar is there more or less just to throw out those mending uh heels out to that misha bear every so often and just be like hey you should charge hey you should maybe back up and the, uh, let's see, I'm just, I'm skimming through the other level one talents, and it doesn't seem like it's anything too out of the ordinary. We do have the regeneration globes. Oh, wow, Fox getting caught out right there, and that's a very big setup and very big pickup for the members of Roll One Esports as they clap back and say, hey, we can get some early game kills too. And on the note of that, let's actually jump over to the experience and show you what the actual value is from an early game kill. So far, we were one minute into the game, and that yielded them... 
did they get a, oh, I was like, I was like, why is this number so off? It's because they also got, they just got a Misha bear. Cause it was 299 and they just got the Misha bear who yielded them like another 99 experience overall. So it's just, you can see like early game kills. Yes, they do bring in some experience, but look at the minion experience that's coming currently nearing 4,000 on the side of uh, regen blue. And that's that's the one thing that I, I want to highlight is a lot of teams will kind of tunnel vision. I myself do the same thing on these early game kills. That's not what you need to prioritize. You gotta just go, you gotta go for the soak, you gotta go for rotations, and you gotta go for your regen globe, questing talents like Jaina and Anubarak at level one, because you really wanna finish those as quickly as possible. 20 for the Jaina for that Fingers of Frost to get the extra 10% damage, as well as a mana return. I think it's two, two, uh, you're increasing it by two every single time. Excuse me, 0.1 seconds. Uh, up to two seconds right there for your regeneration on your mana for the Jaina. So it's just things like that, and then you just have the Regeneration Master 4, the Anubarak who gets a faster regeneration, and you as well as getting a nice uh, chunk of health right there. That 500 health really gonna get them some extra value in the later half of the game right now. But Big Beard and bottom lane, like I have to keep, I have to keep an eye on their on their health bar right there because that is just, whew. Yo, I love Flare. I've, I honestly, I barely see it. Flare surprisingly, surprisingly good. The duration. Hold on. Revealing for 20 seconds, yeah. Uh, Flare surprisingly good, its duration is as long as the cooldown, pretty sure. Yeah, 20 second cooldown for a 20 second flare. That's actually a good point. I didn't actually notice that whatsoever. That's that's a really good point to make right there. Oopsie. Um, jump into players. There we go. Speaking of jumping to players, actually in this bottom lane, we do have Grendel getting pushed back a little bit by the big beard Misha combo. We do have the Vala coming down here to help out a little bit just to push out, maybe get a couple of those autos. Misha Bear gets the last one and then Back into rotation. Zed, uh, not gonna get hit there. Maybe it was just a, four, it was just some aggression coming out. Not sure. And uh, arcane intelligence, arcane intellect. Excuse me, for the Jana right there, which I believe is mana return on shield. Ooh, excuse me. Oh my god, mana return on ba mana return from basic attacks on shield targets. There we go. <clears throat> One sec. Yeah, sorry, Stark. I need to put the cooldown on that to like zero. Um, I'll do it. I'll do it after this game, so that way people can spam it. Cause I, I enjoy I, I enjoy that one being spammable. I think it's funny. First turn in is going to be coming out in favor for the members of Regen Blue. What value they bring to the table with this is 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 my question here. It's it's about five minutes into the game when they'll descend, so I think they'll be stacked up to that point. I believe it's when they actually make it into lane, not when they actually are spawned. I'd have to double check on that one for the scaling overall, but still. Blue, or excuse me, Regen Blue is going to be having their first uh, Web Weaver phase here, and now let's see if they're going to be able to push this in. By the way, it's going to change in this bottom over here to blue because we're just getting vision for them, so you are always the blue team in your own game, but it's a little bit different when you're being uh, spectated, so we are just seeing them trying to prioritize this top lane. Looks like Chen's going to be down in that bottom lane. I'll try and keep an eye on uh, Misha Bear's health right there, or mo more or less Rexar's health, because Misha Bear's usually fine. She's absolutely, like, she never goes down, but top lane is going to be Siege in right here. And often we do see this as the priority, more or less, because of the fact that this is the boss lane. So you'll, you'll then maybe get the pairing. Oh, Grendel, come on, man. You didn't have to kick the bear. This solo lane. Uh, no, it's <laughs> I was actually like, I got super excited. And then I looked up and I didn't see 10 talent tiers. And I was like, are we seriously about to get like a wandering keg to push them back? But Big Beard, look at this dive from Chen. He's going to be taking down the Rexar. And look how many gems are going to be dropped as well. That's that's a it's a decent amount. Like to be able to remove ten gems from the enemy team, that's a that's a good pickup right there for for your uh, for your Chen player. And now the Regen Blue is gonna be stepping into bottom lane. They want to at least convert bottom lane fort down to make this life a little bit easier for the Chen player. They can also play this lane a lot more aggressive as there's a further retreat path for the Misha Rexar combo that just respawned right now. No turn availability. They need another. Um, I can cast her math. Fourteen gems. Nope. They already changed it. They need eleven gems. Once they get those 11 gems, which is four lanes of rotation, then they're going to be able to pick up another web weaver here. And it seems like they're watching both these turn-ins. They want to deny any sort of turn-in coming in from either side. We're going to see the 10 talent tiers in just a second. We've seen the talents for quite a long time. Let's actually take a peek at some of the other numbers and cycle through those. <laughs> Stark, you can't let chat get too spooky. <laughs> Sentinel coming out. ETC will be finishing out the proc rock, so that's going to be some healing for the friendly team. And it's a little surprising. I've actually seen kind of ETCs picking up everything. Um, back and bottom lane. Um, no one saw that right there. Okay. <laughs> Adequate spook. <laughs> I like the all chat oof. Like, 
I don't even think they might have known, unless unless they heard the global, like, the charge of the Hyperion laser or something. Oh, Cocoon onto one. It's the ETC. Mosh bits there. Do they just mosh right out of this? That's the question. Nope. That's going to be a lot of good blow up right there. Rocker World is going to try and get the power slide out. That's also going to be the flailing swipe coming out from the Stukov. They try and go for the mosh bit right there. It's actually going to be on... Is it on? No, it's just on a 10 second cooldown. I could hear the dink. And that's going to be Vala getting picked off right there. The members of Regen Blue putting on some pressure in this early to mid game. As they've also gone ahead and had uh, mid lane being pushed up by Zed. But they can back off and go for another turn in here. It won't be back to back per se. As it at least will be the second one in a row for that team. And now Zed is just going to be making their way out. A little bit of self shielding in case anyone dives onto them. And they'll make it out just fine. I think Chen is just able to kill Rexar if the fort isn't safe. Fair. Grendel, Chen, God. I mean, if you were Chen, God, you'd pick up Wandering Keg. I'm just... <laughs> no, they're doing actually a great job. Let's actually highlight really quickly the damage that this Chen's done because they're doing the most heroic damage for the friendly team right now. By a solid 4,000 over their Rainer, but this is going to be a fight breaking out over in this mid lane. Huge silence coming out. Rainer's the first one to go down. Starting to turn this around. Blue Webweaver's descending as well. That's going to be a second pick onto Anubarak as well. If they pick off Grendel, that's a lot. Oh my god, the solo mosh pit! The solo dance just for the for the, for the the Chen right there. And they take down the majority of the economy on the opposing side. We can actually jump to that right now. Look at that. They have eight gems in total on the side of Regen Blue. That's a huge... Momentum shift in favor for the members of Roll One Esports getting those two picks right there Or excuse me those three picks right there and just dropping so many gems on the Chen. Oh, that's that's a hard time right there And I wonder if, if um, the Storm Earth and Fire was attempted to be used there or if it was just coming off a cooldown It looks like it might have been on a 10 second cooldown, but wow Wow That time you don't call it your heroic mistake and they and they hope they didn't see and you play as if you have you still have Hyperion but uh, Rowan Esports might have heard slash, heard slash, seen slash heard Hyperion. Hyperion is huge. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. That's also me adding in random words into that. Oof. That's, that's such a strong pickup from Roll 1. Like, that, I, I had to, like, for a lot of that early game, I was just like, regen's got this. And, like, you know... I try and be as biased as I can as a caster, but I still have my own thoughts during the game. I'm just like, yeah, no, I think regen's going to be able to take us to game three. Like mentally, I was just like, all right, prepare for game three because I think they can do it. I, by no we, I don't think this is them just completely out, but that's definitely a real big kind of pause in any sort of, of, of momentum or, or sort of value they were building. They've completely evened out the experience. I mean, look at this right now. You can actually see between the two teams, it's it's dead even in experience. 3,700 to 3,000. 30, 37,000 to 37,000. Trying to do everything at once and just not reading numbers. Whew. But they're going to turn a little bit here. Power slide onto one. And that's a new break being picked out right there. The boars are unleashed as well. And those are going to slow and give vision. They're trying to chase further out into this. ETC has a mosh pit. Do they go for the solo dance? They're in range for a power... Nice use of the, of the penetrating round. Oh, they catch onto one. Power slide. Do they go for the solo dance? They don't even need it. And Jay goes down as well. Roll 1 Esports have found their momentum in this game number two on Tomb of the Spider Queen. They don't have a turn in here, but they're only, I think, like three gems off. No, no, more than that. I think it's like four gems off. <laughs> Four gems off from uh, a turn in themselves. They're gonna go ahead and boss and go for the turn, and I think they actually they'll need to rotate into mid. Maybe they'll they'll start to cycle members out for this. Do they have vision of the enemy team? Is the question. They know that a couple members went and got this camp, and that's really all they can see. They've got top lane pushed in. If they want to go for any sort, no, I think they're just gonna go for the, uh, the 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 push power with this. Are they? Oh, big, yeah, so they, they are, they're just going to go for the push power with the boss right now. They've got a wave pushed up as well. They're not going to be trying to go for anything else. And that's going to be Misha and Rex are completing out uh, the gem total that they need for this. But, hey, maybe they'll, maybe they'll just delay out a second wave and they'll they'll say, cool, we opened up the front gate of this keep. We did a little damage to it. Now let's summon the min the uh, web weavers, which will descend right in front of it, essentially. And I think that's the play right here. Look at them. They're already backing out. Do they know this on the side of regen? I don't know. They know that they have boss clear, and that's going to be easy for them. Sentinel going to be coming out as well, and that's going to be going across the map. They know that they're going for the turn, and they, they're like, Chen, you got to do something. If you have Wandering Keg, you got to... Oh, wait. I'm being a butt about it, but I really want Wandering Keg in one of these games. I've only gotten one Wandering Keg game since since the changes. Uh, 
Blue Web we've returned in though. Bottom lane is going to be really far pushed out because it does descend as far out as I believe your minion wave has pushed out. Is it? No, or is it as far out as the enemy minion wave is? Let's find out. I know Garden of Terror is as far as yours is. Okay, so it's as far out as the enemy minion wave. So you can see them. They're all descending uh, as they crash right there. And you can see in mid lane the same thing. Bottom lane will be having the Misha Bear uh, combo clearing that one out and pushing down there. 16 talents here over the opposing side. Regen needs to find a fight here on their terms without their talent here, or they have to wait for, for 16s. And that's that's a bit of a rough spot to be in. They could go for a giant flank. It seems like that's going to be the case, but they do have that vision from Zad right there. They know that they're coming into this. Rexar has now come up here as well. They've, they've left that bottom lane. They've got all five, I guess six if you really count the Misha Bear as well. And they've got their 16 talent here over the enemy team. Grendel looking for an angle for some sort of way to kick in onto this. Shadowstalk used right there. Lurking arm going out as well. And... They're playing it slow, they're playing it safe, but this is so far working out for them on the side of Regen, or on the side of Roll1 Esports. Regen is going to make the defense overall in both these lanes. They go for the bottom lane now. Regeneration Master is going to be finished for Regen. If only Mongoose uh, had like an R name, then I could have just triple R's right there. But Boars are going to be unleashed as well as the Hyperion coming out. Testar with the Archon farm. That's going to be the Vault onto, excuse me, the uh, Reign of Vengeance onto the Anubarak right there. As uh, Vala was vaulting around trying to get the reset onto the Monster Hunter or the Hungering Arrow, if I'm not mistaken. Because they did take that as well. Nope, they didn't. It's completely, it's multi-shot build. Um, or excuse me, Creed of the, Creed of the Hunter build. With that multi-shot at level 7, that arsenal. But hey... They're going to try and go for a turn in themselves in the side of regen blue. They could. They've got even talent here. It's even on pretty much every front. Let's actually look through some of the other uh, northern exposure. Ooh. Going to go for damage, or excuse me, armor reduction. Not going to be going for the numbing blast for the root right there. Just saying, Barrel could have won that fight. Goliath? This is why... See? Good people come to the stream. Goliath, you're a good person. <laughs> To be like, honestly, like if they picked Wandering Ch Keg, I would have been like, woo! All right, Panda Pels is really powerful though. Like in, in all actuality, Storm Earth and Fire is really, really valuable in a team fight scenario. It gets so much value. There's so much harassment. It's just such a powerful tool. Wandering Keg is great, but I, it's it's very, as Legacy has said in this chat very often, and if, if they're out there, shout out to them. They've always said, you know, Bahama, it's, it's, it's very map dependent, but like, Storm Earth and Fire, it's just so strong, like sometimes you just can't get that, give that over, and I, I agree. Sometimes you really can't give over that value from Storm Earth and Fire because of just how divey, how harass, how much harassment you can bring to the table. Wandering Keg is great, but it's I think it's a way shorter duration um, in comparison. So overall, I mean, yes, I do rant about it, and yes, I do heckle it, but it's more or less it's just because I, I want to see, it's like Cho'Gal, like, are there better heroes? Absolutely. Do I want it? Every single game. <laughs> They are going to be going for this Bruiser Camp on the right-hand side. No team has a turn in just... Actually, no. Um, uh, Regen Blue has a turn in right now. They've almost got enough... If they did a couple rotations or if they split themselves during the uh, Zer Zerg Wave, during the Web Weaver phase, they might be able to have enough for the back-to-back. -back. Look at this Tassadar play in top, though. Look at this. That was actually what I was thinking the entire time, Goliath. Like, I was watching that Chen flanking over here, like, right over here, and I was like, you could barrel into the front gate and just push them right there. Low Tassadar, can you get out Oracles there? Kick goes out from Chen. They get that right in time. Gonna back off. This is gonna slow them down, but there's not like they're, they're gonna delay out for a turn, and that's gonna be Tassadar going down. That's a strong pick for the members of Regen Blue. They're gonna be able to make sure that top lane doesn't get too far pushed out. They need to make sure that this catapult gets cleared as well, and now they can go for a turn in themselves. Realistically, they should be trying to push back as many of their waves as quickly as possible before going for a turn in. Because more or less, I think it's just gonna buy them time, and that also will have time for the... Uh, for the Tassadar to get back as well. Yeah, I get it. Storm Earth and Fire literally gets rid of all stagger damage, but the reason not to take... But Keg makes plays. Exactly. Exactly. It's it's like... Oh, Misha Bear, how did you live? Uh, it's much like how you see Muradins with Haymakers here and there. Like, Avatar form is so strong because of how much sustain and how much of a tank you can be. But Haymaker, it's the Playmaker. Also, I want to see Washing Machine Ch Keg. Or, yeah, Washing Machine... Chen Sony, I guess is the better way to say it. Because I have not seen that in a while. It's very telegraphed, and it's like, alright, cool, we're going to 20. So just like, why not grab an Azebo? You, you zombie wall him, and then you leap in with the upgrade with Crater, and then you go for the upgrade on Wandering Keg so you get the speed increase, and you just wash and machine them to hell, and you throw in some spiders, maybe, from that Azebo. I'm just saying. 
There's a lot of teams in chat. They could get some they could get some cool draft ideas for my horrible ideas. Um, please, I want some team to try and do like washing machine with a Nazebo. That's such a 20 game. Because I mean if you're gonna go to 20, you might as well just grab Nazebo too. And then just have that stupid damage with you. But Siege coming in from the members of Regen Blue, they've got a Webweaver pushing in through top lane. And as I said, like, I was thinking that this wouldn't get as much value, but they're getting a ton of value with this on their side. They're going to be able to get this pushed in. They don't have 20 talent here, so they're just going to say, you know what, it's not worth it, let's back off. We also do have the uh, Death Mosh for the ETC, I don't know, Kill Command for the uh, for the Rexar, the upgrade from that. Rancor on that Vala. Uh, Bio Explosion Switch. And we do have the Archon upgrade, the Twilight Archon. Ooh... I believe you can you can say like fully you can sustain Archon as long as you're autoing, if I'm not mistaken on that. Turn and availability is here for the members of Roll One Esports. Chen gonna be blocking this bottom area. They're not too far off from a turn in on the side of Regen Blue. A second turn in here could yield them a potential for a um I, I love these fl like that flare is such a cool little animation, just how it kind of sits on the ground. And it has a little Nexus logo too. I, that's just cool. I like the little things like that, but Rock Your World and Big Beard are going for the turn, and they're not going to scout this out in time. Sentinel goes right through. Big Beard is going to be able to get it. Oh, no, they need they need Vala, but Vala's going to be able to get it in as well, and that's going to be the members of Roll 1 Esports able to get that turn right there. Kill Command coming out. Are they going to be able to connect onto any of these members? That's going to be the root onto two. Boar goes out as well, but it doesn't get that extra root. They're going to be focusing onto Grendel. Do they have the Storm Earth and Fire in time? There's going to be the knockback, and no, they're going to be knocked out of it by the by Rock Your World, but they end up getting going down. That's going to be the Death Mosh onto the Jaina, who takes a little dance and they end up getting picked picked off as well and now web weavers are descending and as i said they descend as far up as the enemy minion wave is or structure and here we go we got this web weaver right in front of a mid lane keep they're gonna actually rotate out of here rainer goes down right there to vala who just put in some damage speaking of let's actually jump over to that damage right now i've noted that the chen had the most damage in the early game look at this vala with thirty-four thousand. rainer not far behind but the members of roll one esports are like are saying we got to take advantage while the enemy team is down. They've got three down. We walk over to the car and the GGs are being thrown out. It looks like the members of Roll One Esports are going to take this best of three series 2 0. GG. Well played. Is that Vala build to you? I definitely think it could be. I would have to look. <laughs> I'm just going to find out if one player wants to do an interview. Does one player want to do enter? All right, so what did Vala take here? She went Hot Pursuit. She went into the uh, Creed of the Hunter. Then she went to Arsenal. So you have cooldown reduction on your, uh, your multi-shot. Reign of Vengeance for the 10. Uh, temper Discipline at level 13. While at 10 stacks of Hatred, basic attacks heal for 25. That pairs well into Hot Pursuit as well as the uh, Creed of the Hunter. And then Rancor. I don't know. I'm not a, a Vala main, so I, I honestly wouldn't know. But it seems like there's some synergies right there. We're rolling for it right now. Uh, oh. Okay. I'll be in... Uh, I'll be in Lobby... Oh my god. Lobby 1. There we go. I can type to teams. Let's get myself in there and I'll mute it. And we'll look at the uh, numbers once again really quickly. Get an idea of what those look like. Was hoping for a game number three, but alas, I agree. I agree with that so very much. Um, bum, 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 bum. I'm just changing a Nightbot command really quickly. Custom commands. Show all commands. Spooky Worm, edit. Cooldown. Five seconds is the shortest I can put it. All right, Spooky Worms been updated. Alrighty, friends. Whew. That was such a good game. I really, really love that right there. Um. Oh, I think they're like literally rolling a dice to figure out who goes into the uh, interview. Giant killer at 16 is, uh, giant killer is at 16 for Vala. Ah, got you. Team? Bat Battlefield of Eternity was super tight is what they were saying to each other, and I agree with that. It was a really, really close game. Um, I'm just going to pull them up to here, and... 
Joining me right now is Rock Your World. How you doing, bud? Congratulations on your 2-0 victory. Oh my goodness, Bahamut. That was nuts. That very, was such very well played. That was su seriously such a good back and forth game. So let's actually let's jump to game number one. Uh, we All go right. to Battlefield of Eternity. It's such a back yep. and forth. The race is is anyone's game realistically. What was it that really kind of just s spelled like what was it just a slow win? <sighs> Let me actually get to the question. How did you decide how to kind of take that end? Because it was it was kind of not so all over the place, but there was definitely a lot of back and forth, and there was a lot of great fighting throughout that game, and it was super tight, as actually uh, Zad was saying in, in the DB chat. Can you talk about your own kind of decisions you made in that game and how you kind of got to that that end? Because it was really, really well played back and forth. Uh, no, I agree 100%. So, um, the, so when looking at our race flat out, I was like, we win the race for the first Immortal. Okay. So the question became, once they hit 10, can we push the advantage enough before before they actually start because um it was one of the things that like it absolutely sucked that we knew zair was going to come online so we're like how do we continue to win or push the race and um it kind of as you said they came online they got two or three kills and then after they got two or three kills so it's like i'm like yeah they got the kills but they still have no race like sylvanas doesn't get a huge amount of race and they need zair and yep. Zeratul took too much damage and had to go home. So we ended up winning that second Immortal, which I think if we would have lost that second Immortal, I don't think we would have been able to recover just because like we would have been on our heels the whole time. Okay. Um, but uh, as far as la last calls and stuff, um, I forget who got picked or who died. It may have been me, but someone got picked and we knew that they were going to win the Immortal. And so we said, guys, give up top building. Beer, just push bottom. Force someone to show up. Like, hopefully someone comes and defends against you so we can actually make a defense. Mm -hmm. And so as soon as Beard yelled, Panda's here, I was like, all right, let's engage. And so I threw out my shield from over the wall. So it's like just to try to hit somebody. And Temper followed it up with a stun. And I think we ended up getting a quick kill on Zeratul. And then we just kept charging in and managed to pick them all off. Um, didn't know we were going to take core damage. <laughs> but, but I was like, well, we'll just trade. We'll go keep for keep. Yeah. And then Beard's like, guys, I need a TP home. I'm like, why are you TPing home? And we're like sitting there taking core damage. I'm like, no, 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 please do. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely very close. And um, even even Spider Queen was very close. I really liked both games. It's always fun. Oh, I agree. Mongoose and friends. Tuba Spider Queen was a really, really close game. Did you, um, I was looking at chat a little bit and, and at one point that early game wipe right as they, as you got a web weaver and you started pushing on, did you feel like that was like the massive momentum dynamic shift that you were just like, all right, cool. Like we can start to really take it after this. Or was it like, we still got a lot of plays to make before we can step forward and try and end this game. <clears throat> that was honestly, that was the, the beginning of the snowball like where we were able to get all three keeps okay. and then from there we kind of had like just went off our checklist almost of like hey is boss up hey is this up is this is this camp up how when do we get web weavers and so i feel like we got all the things on the checklist that we wanted once we were up but on that second web weaver mm -hmm. like we did a very poor job of supporting any of them because gotcha. like we really should have gotten a keep on on one of those attempts and um just a mixture of like positioning and ult usage and other stuff where i was like you know what like it's it, like we made a mistake we should have gotten one of those buildings but we're just gonna play safe and so it felt really weird dancing around the map not doing anything for a minute or two that's we're like sitting there like they're gonna take that camp <laughs> All right, we just wait for them to take the camp, <laughs> and we're like, maybe Zad go push top and see if they'll chase you. Like, we, we have to do something because there's nothing on the map to do. So that's yeah. It, it's, no, it was it was such good games. Uh, really quickly before we kind of wrap up our interview here, um, how did it feel to get that death mush right at the end? I I was trying so hard to just spam slide over towards the team. I was I'm like I knew that the goal was to kill Panda. So once I interrupted the panda, I really was good. already on the idea of how do I get over towards them. And um, I'm glad that one of them hit. I, I was really, I had thought for sure Gina was out of it. And I thought I was going to waste the talent. But I did I'm too, but it landed. You, you got it. And it was, it was really, really good. I, I had such a blast at these games. Before I let you go, any shout outs that you'd like to give? The floor is all yours, my friend. Oh, thank you. Uh, as always, shout out to the wonderful guys at Roll Esports. Um, shout out to our sponsor, Mr. Osmo. 
I know we haven't talked in a while, but uh, thank you for sponsoring us. You're still the best sponsor. Um, shout out to just the family and friends and the people supporting us, whether it be just uh, wife and children or whatever it may be. And of course, shout out to Regen Blue. They're always a blast. Love Mongoose and the boys. And uh, man, you'll go either way next time. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for the interview. Thank you so much for the games. And I look forward to see you further down in the Nexus Gaming Series season. You have a great night, my friend. Thank you, Bahamut. You too. All righty. Everybody, that is going to wrap up stream this evening. Three hours later, that's going to be it. Thank you all for so much for hanging out. But before we host over Jazzy, we're, she's going to be uh, ranking up right now and go support her, cheer her on in some of those great 